Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I am Pastor Steve. My goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And honestly, there's no better way in my mind to do that than to spend a little time in the Word of God, just allowing ourselves to be grounded by that. And so today, we're going to do that. If you've been with us before, you may know that my encouragement is, my invitation is, that we would all read one chapter of Scripture together every day as a way of staying grounded in God's Word. And so we have just recently been working our way through Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and today we come to Ephesians chapter 4. And so when we're all done our lesson this morning, I would invite you to take a few moments and read the whole of Ephesians chapter 4. But for the purpose of our lesson, we'll be looking at verses 1 through 6. And so if you have a Bible handy, I would invite you to open up with me, or you can do it on your phone app, open up with me to Ephesians chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. Here Paul writes, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is over all and through all and in all. Here in chapter 4, Paul makes a transition. If you were with us yesterday, you may re remember that we talked about how uh, Paul had been praying for the Ephesians, and he spends a good bit of time in chapter 3 praying for them. Now, in this chapter, he begins to instruct them in Christian living. As we mature in our faith, it is meant to be reflected in the way we live, right? It's not just our faith, it's not just here. It's heart, but it's hands also. It's how we live out our lives. Jesus accepts us just as we are. But that doesn't necessarily mean he leaves us just as we were, right? He is shaping us, he is changing us. And after we have accepted Christ and are justified of our sins, we begin a lifelong process that we call sanctification. Sanctification is the process of maturing in our faith and becoming more and more like Jesus. And this is a lifelong journey for believers. We never fully arrive. We are always striving to grow in our faith and to become more like Him. So, he starts here, Paul starts here with several foundational things that should be increasingly present in the life of a Christ follower. In verse 2, he begins with, Be completely humble and gentle. All right, so why is humility important? We hear that actually in numerous places in the scripture, admonishing us, encouraging us to be humble. Why is humility important for a Christ follower? Well, think about what John the Baptist said when Jesus arrived on a scene. The disciples, his disciples saw Jesus going by. John said, in essence, I must become less that he may become more. Right? Our goal as Christians is not to lift up ourselves. Our goal is to lift up Christ. Our goal is not to point people to ourselves, but our goal is to point others towards Christ. And so it takes humility to be able to put aside uh, developing ourselves, lifting up ourselves, instead to be uh, leaning people into Jesus. Right? And so we have to be humble in order to not have, not have to be the center, right, the thing, right? And so he encourages us to be humble. Then he says, be patient, bearing with one another in love, 
Now let's just be honest. Not everyone is easy to love all the time. Sometimes it's hard, but God has been infinitely patient with us. And likewise, we are called to be patient with others. And we are to bear with them in love, he says. You know, it's easy to love our favorite people. But as we are maturing in our faith, it changes our ability to love all people. And so as we grow deeper in faith, we are increasingly able and love with greater intensity, even those what I call EGR people, extra grace required. Right? We've all got a few of those people in our lives, don't we? They just need a little extra grace. Um, but as we mature in faith, we're able to extend that kind of grace because we are more and more reflecting Jesus. And then finally, in verse 3, he says, and make every effort to keep, to maintain the unity. This was the very thing that Jesus prayed for for us in John chapter 17. Unity requires us to put others ahead of ourselves. And unity is an essential element in us being effective in the work of Christ. We are meant to be working together, sharing our gifts, lifting one another up, working together as, as a body. And so this is essential. When you take the time today to read the whole chapter, you're going to see much, much more. But let's begin with these marks of a maturing Christian. Humility, gentleness, patience, love, and unity. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this teaching from Paul on how it is we mature in our faith, how it is we increasingly reflect Jesus in our living and help us, God, to just find more and more of that in our lives. Help us to be increasing in those aspects of Christian maturity, of, of, of our sanctification journey, Lord. And so I just pray that you'd help us to do that so that every day we can be a little bit more like Jesus. In your holy name we pray, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.